Okay, so now I'd like to talk about uh, like the progressions of developing as a, as a musician. Um, I think the first thing that you have to do is to learn to really master your instrument. And by that is to, to uh, develop as much technique as you can on the instrument and this usually means uh, have many long hours because this instrument is uh, or any instrument that uh, matter you can you can uh, master it without just hours and hours and hours of practice to learn all the nuances not just the notes but the best possible fingering and uh, how to coax tone out of the piano one person can play one the chord on the piano another person can play the same chord but it sounds different on the same piano so just first stage is to do everything possible to, to master the instrument. Um, and the, the next stage, especially when you're, you're, you're young, when you still have memory, you know, and uh, because as you grow older, you find that uh, it's not easy um, to, to remember things. Right. In fact, I always tell myself now, I suffer, I suffer from this thing called CRS, which is can't remember shit. And, and it's true, you, you, you don't retain things uh, the way you do when you're younger. I mean, your brain has other functions that, that you have more understanding, also the ability to use what you've learned in a more profound ways. But uh, while you still have the ability to put things into your your memory, try to learn as many tunes as you can learn. Uh, just increase the size of your repertoire. And that means that knowing the song from memory without having to look at the chart. <laughs> And then the, the third stage of learning to play music or being a musician is to try to develop beautiful <coughs> phrasing. So sometimes when people talk, right, whatever language they're talking in, they can one guy can say can say exactly the same thing from another guy or read a poem. But why does the other guy make you have tears in your tears in your eyes? Why does the other guy make you feel that tug in your heart? Why does the other guy make you feel your hair in the back of your neck stand? And that is for a musician, is the ability to phrase as beautifully as you can. And, and, and the key to, to learning how to phrase beautifully is to understand that most of the time, it's not an absolute statement, but most of the time you have to play the notes in very accurately and you have to sound, now Louis Armstrong defines swing as swing as playing the note at exactly the instant it is meant to be sound, sounded. 
not an instant before and not an instant after. And actually the secret to being able to play uh, the notes and sound the notes exactly when they were meant to be sounded is to also understand that in between the notes there's space and that the space is also a part of the music and you have to play the space they say a good musician plays the notes a great musician plays the spaces in between the notes one example that I was, I was very humbled was when I had a chance to play with Lee with now and we were playing this Don Brusin tune called Music Prayer for Peace and the intro of the, 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 the song was a phrase like this like so my keyboard player and I, before Lee Rittenauer and Anthony Jackson and Bob Wilson and Ernie Watts and Harry Tan came over, two of us were the only Singaporean uh, musicians in the band. We, we, we actually hired musicians to practice with us like you know, two or three times the repertoire that we were going to play with me and uh, like the third rehearsal we were playing this tune you know and both of us, I'm, I'm playing one line and he's playing the harmony right so we're looking at each other going wow man we're hot shit and we got this thing down when Lee comes to him, no problem so when we had the first rehearsal we leave with now and everyone's there right so then we're playing my friend and I know the best now so we look at each other again and we got it man. And then he comes in. Both of us look at each other and go, oh shit. You know, it's just night and day. It's hard to explain that. But it was there's a saying in Malay, you know, to, uh, in the Malay language, don't be like a frog underneath a coconut shell shell. And I don't know whether you have that saying in Thailand, but basically, very often when a baby frog, right, this coconut shell falls on top, and they think that this is the universe beneath this coconut shell, right? And then, and when you when you open the coconut shell, it's like, wow, this is the world, this is the universe. That's exactly how we felt when 16 bars after we played the phrase, Lee came in. We felt that like someone lifted the coconut shell. Now, I use a visual, I use a visual art uh, analogy to explain to you further. This is very important to me because I think that this is the point at which this is the point where craftsmanship or craft and art meet for a musician phrasing so uh, when I was in Bali one time and I was you know on the beach in somewhere and this guy brought a, a carving of a, 
I don't know if you've seen this carving, a fisherman holding the net, it's an old man of the sea, with a holding a fishing net, and uh, he wanted to sell it to me for, I don't know, maybe like five US dollars, something like that, you know. And uh, we look at it, it looks kind of nice. So then we went up to Ubud in the mountains, right? And then there was this craftsman, there was the same from afar, I saw, wow, this is the same, the same uh, carving, right? But I took a look at the carving and it looks like this carving is, is alive, it's human, it's almost like human. And it's, you could feel the emotions of this man holding, this old man, fisherman holding the fishing net. You could feel where this guy lives, you could tell the struggles he had and, and trying to feed his family and all of that stories came out of the carving, the same carving. ตอนนี้อยู่ที่บาลีเนี่ยอยู่ที่ชายหาดที่ไม้แกะสลับรูปชายหลายหลักหลักเราเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจอเจ